game day view, just like Geno Smith is back, baby. And we're breaking down every game on the week two slate. They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. No, uh, not our guy Greg. He didn't. He's ready for Seahawks 49ers in Santa Clara this week and Vikings Eagles, where points will most definitely be scored. Lots of them. Which is something Aaron Rodgers hopes to do against the team that, uh, well, you know. Broncos, Bengals, and Rams are all looking for bounce back games. Someone in the AFC South has to win this week, right? And maybe this is the week the Cowboys will finally score a touchdown. Even Joe Flacco did that already, okay? Really, I'm taking receipts. Uh, I'm so sorry. My bad. You know what? Let's start the show. Game Day View presented by Mercedes Benz starts right now. Hey, welcome to Game Day View. Week one, amazing. Thursday Night Football, also amazing. What a week. We are back. My name is Rachel Bonetta, Greg Rosenthal, Cynthia Freeland, Patrick Laybon. Guys, it is week two. How was week one for you? I just want to check in. Was everything okay? Did it feel too competitive? Just getting used to the crippling fear <laughs> of being worried about certain things. Uh -huh. Normally it's like, oh, I just call these games and I talk about them fun, but now it's like, this is my responsibility. Yeah. You get I need to be right. right. Yeah, you think uh, Robert Sala is the only one with receipts. Mm. Guess what? We have receipts on this show, and I begged for us to not show them, okay? Because <laughs> not everything was great and peachy in my world. And you know what? The producers... They said, you know, Rachel, they said this in our production meeting this morning, you should apologize to America, is uh, I believe what was said. So, could I have my single camera? Do we need to camera, contact the embassy? Please. <laughs> I'm supposed to apologize to America, but guess oh, no. what? I'm not going to. I stand by my picks. I believed in some underdogs because that's what America should do. So I'm just going to, actually, I'm, I'm picking mostly favorites this week because I, uh, it's pretty sad after Sunday. Okay, look, nobody's perfect. We have good weeks and we have bad weeks. This was a bad week for me. I will own it. I will wear it. Some might say this is a minor setback for a major comeback, baby. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, enough about the past. Let's get to the games, baby. Week two, saving maybe the best for last, huh? Vikings-Eagles, both offenses mm. held it down a week ago. Justin Jefferson and A.J. Brown, just both really good at, at football, catching it in particular. FanDuel has the Eagles slightly favored here at home. Greg, I turn to you first. Who do you like? I like the Eagles in this game, 30 to 27. I like a lot of points. Let's go. Partly because of the quarterbacks. They're both play, playing great, and especially Jalen Hurts. When you look at what he did a week ago, yes, A.J. Brown makes him better as a passer, but as a runner, he is special. And I somehow think he doesn't get credit for it. Look at this goal line run that most quarterbacks would have lost four or five yards last week. Then they would have kicked a field goal. He ends up getting back to the one-yard line because he's got the vision, it's got the power, and then he <laughs> runs it in easily on the next play. I think he could end up having one of the greatest seasons any quarterback has ever what? had uh. running the ball. Oh. I mean, he's, he already did a year ago, and people think it's like almost it's rude to talk about how good he is as a runner, but it changes their offense. He's got power. Wow. He's got vision. Him and Josh Allen were the most effective runners in the entire NFL year uh, last year mm -hmm. on a per-play basis, quarterback or running back. All right, Greg's making statements right off the top, coming in hot. Sam, what do you like? I know. Well, I, too, like the Eagles. I have a four-point win for them. I want to talk about A.J. Brown because I did some research here this week on wide receivers in New City. Situation. So be it a team that they switch to or maybe a new quarterback or maybe a new coach. And two of these guys were matched up in this game. And on this side of the ball, A.J. Brown, when you look to see where he's been absolutely exceptional since 2019, I know a different team, but 1,811 yards on in-breaking routes, slants, crossers, posts, angles, ins. This guy can do it all. And when you saw it last week, he kind of had this edge on the Lions defense because they didn't exactly know how they were going to use him. Just, some, just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, historically, when a really top-end receiver switches teams, they get 11 quarters and 11 minutes of an advantage. Oh, whoa. a lot of math. Whoa. Oh. So, so four free quarters this week. Yeah. We, we're into next week. That's great. No, meaning that it just means that they'll mm. score. The, the, the offense has an advantage for about, about four games. There you go. Love that. I love it, or too. Three games, rather. My favorite thing three about games. it is because both Greg and Cynthia have confirmed my priors. I like a score fest in this one. I think we're getting points, points, points. Hey. I do have a five-point win for the Philadelphia Eagles. And so what do I talk about here? Of course, I talk about defense. Like, who's going to get the stop? Who's going to be instrumental in the stop uh, that keeps the team from winning the, the game? And I'm going to say it's going to be the Eagles' defense. 
Lions because when Jordan Davis was on the field, shout out to our research department and Next Gen Stats, the Lions only got 2.9 yards per carry. Jordan Davis off the field, 10 yards a carry. Jonathan Gannon, if you can hear me, uh, don't look at Twitter because Eagles fans are, are saying not nice things about you, but play the big man. Play the big man. Uh, keep uh, Dalvin Cook from getting a lot of rush yards and, and win the game. There you go. Don't look at Twitter. Just watch this show. Yes. Are we ready for the first meme alert? Of the day? I don't think so. Oh, oh, wait, you're going on your own again? How am I the only one taking the Vikings here? I'm actually I'm really surprised, surprised actually. With I this. thought we'd be split on this one. I'm taking the Vikings 31 to 27. We've already talked about Justin Jefferson, but this kid is crazy. Okay, Aaron Rodgers said last week you were the best player out on the field. And I wanted to show you this one play that I'm obsessed with. I saw it on Twitter. Okay, this doesn't result in anything, but just watch Justin Jefferson and Jair Alexander just absolutely cooks the man, Ew. leaves him in the dust. This guy is so much fun to watch. And on the other hand, Philly almost got by, beat by the Eagles last week. You guys all called me crazy for taking the, the, the Lions, sorry, last week. How'd that work And it out? almost happened. It almost happened. I just we like should that put you an have almost on that. Your maple promising. leaf. The maple leaf on the Lonetta is, I mean, that's I mean, really, that, like, non-apology really apology you had. Uh, it's a little, that, America. It's a little early for a lone bone early. Vikings, in let's fighting go, on that lone bone. Uh, Jefferson and Brown are the second <laughs> duo in NFL history to meet in week two after each having 150-plus receiving yards in week one. Uh, Antonio Brown and Adam Thielen in 2017. 12 wide receivers at 100 plus receiving yards in week one. That is fun. Let's play a little this guy or that guy. Cynthia, both guys rushed, uh, rushed it in the opener. Who is more likely to go over 100 on Monday? More likely? I don't have either one forecast for over 100. Mm. Debbie Downer, here she is. But I think that Justin Jefferson does have more yards than A.J. Brown in this matchup. Why? Because if you look at the routes that he ran and where the holes in the defense and the secondary happen to be, it appears to me that the usage will favor Justin Jefferson. So A.J. Brown maybe gets a little help from Devontae Smith perhaps this game. So it's not a bad thing. And obviously have the Eagles winning, which is also another reason because game script would dictate that – the Vikings would thus be passing more often and deeper into the game. Okay. From behind. You, heard, you heard her. Makes sense. All right. Uh, let's, let's roll a clip, shall we? I, I'm sure you're wondering at home, why are we showing you a field goal from four years ago? Great question. I don't even know it's four years Fun ago. Fun fact, Greg. <laughs> if the Raiders had lost this game and Daniel Carlson hadn't drilled this 35-yarder, the Raiders would have finished with a worse record than the Cardinals and the first overall pick. The Cardinals used on Kyler Murray Whoa. would have been the Raiders' oh. pick. But right? You we might not have Cliff Kingsbury you in our me? lives. Goodness. Follow Everything me, would yeah. be different. You uh -huh. might not be here. Uh, I, well, I would hope so. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia, you get the web that I'm weaving. It is called storytelling, people. Okay, cards, Raiders, week two. What are you going with? I'm going with the Raiders in this matchup. I'm a little afraid of the secondary for the Cardinals, especially with what we saw from Devontae Adams. But I'm keeping this one a little bit closer. 26-24 is my final Ooh. score because I still don't have a ton of faith in the Raiders' offensive line. I know that the Cardinals didn't really bring the heat. We didn't see J.J. Watt, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm still a little scared. O-lines do matter. Both O-lines are very shoddy. So I think that means there's an opportunity for big plays on either side. But the Raiders pull this one off. Two points. O-lines o -lines do matter. The, the big Turns men out. watching yeah. this Turns show. Turns out. You matter. You matter. Seems and you know so who, who matters even less here? It's the Cardinals offensive line. They, they were so bad a week ago. That's why I have the Raiders winning this game 28-20. to 20. I don't think it's close. Uh, uh, partly because of the communication issues between Kyler Murray and his offensive line. Steve Spagnolo was cooking them up. And Murray was trying to get uh, the guys up front worked out, and it didn't seem like they could get on the same page. He was very hesitant. He was moving off his first read really quickly. And you know who's coaching up this Raiders defense, who I think quietly played well in week one? Patrick Graham, one of the mm -hmm. best defensive coordinator hires of the year. I think he's really good at targeting where the other team is weak, creating a lot of confusion. And oh, by the way, Chandler Jones, Max Crosby, the best duo maybe out there. Ooh. Greg's got a lot of names. 
Greg has mentioned a lot of names of a lot Going of people, but you, you know who Greg has not mentioned? Mm. He has not mentioned the pride of Wake Forest University. One Let's Greg go. Dortch. Let's go. Uh, and it's the fact that Greg Dortch is the Cardinals' leading receiver is probably the reason I'm taking the Raiders in this one. Also in the same score range as Cynthia and Greg, 26-21 Raiders. Because it's two quarterbacks, two good quarterbacks, mind you, that were outright bad in spots in week one. I don't think it will be that bad again, but there's just so much firepower on that Raiders team compared to what Kyler's dealing with. Why, why Sam, you hating on Greg? Greg Dorch. Why are you hating on Greg? I'm not Dorch. hating on Greg. Just because Dorch sounds funny. Dorch. I think it is. He sounds like a fullback. Dorch. He's 5'7". He has he the same like birthday as my daughter. I love Greg Dorch. Your I, daughter's I just, Dorch. You've been Dorch. He's, he's no Devontae Adams. He's no Darren Waller. That's why I'm taking him. What a Dorch. Oh, what a Dorch indeed. Uh, I Meme alert. Our first meme alert of the day. Let's go. I'm going Raiders uh, 24 to 21. Okay. We're all kind of in the you same. Three uh, of you have them closer than the number, though. Yeah. Okay, mine's a little bit lower scoring than your guys. Uh, neither of these teams can go uh, afford to go 0-2. That's why I think it's going to be closer. The Chiefs put up 44 on this Cardinals defense. I know it's a different kind of offense, but I really hope that we get to see Devontae Adams and Derek Carr start to cook a little. All right, NFL Plus is the league's new exclusive video streaming subscription service. NFL Plus has your game day covered with live, local, and primetime regular season and postseason games right on your phone or tablet. NFL Plus is available in the NFL app and at NFL nfl.com subscription plans start at just $4.99 per month fans can visit plus.nfl.com and sign up for a free trial of nfl plus today all right coming up on the other side of the break who owns who huh does aaron Rodgers still own the bears this clip still makes me laugh i own you i, own you. I think that's permanent ownership it's it, it just forever. carries over forever yeah. and ever don't go anywhere. Quick count, Rodgers takes, pump fakes one, scrambles to his right, takes it himself for the touchdown! Aaron Rodgers just inside the pylon! Sometimes you black out on the field. In a, good, in a good way. I looked up in the stands and in the front row all I saw was a woman giving me the double bird. Well, I'm not sure exactly what came out of my mouth next. <laughs> Still one of my favorite clips of all time. Yes, you know, uh, you know what I bet Rogers wishes he owned some wide receivers. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, Still Packers' big favorite here, Cynthia. <laughs> nine and a half. What do you like? I like the Packers to do what the Packers typically do in this situation. Aaron Rodgers, 8-0 since Matt LaFleur was there in games after a loss. Matt LaFleur, 9-0 over that time. That's a pretty big difference. And by the way, almost 32 points per game in those games. So I have a big win here. Tw- like, what is it? I don't even remember. It's so big. Like, 28-17. Oh. I had, to, I had to look at the screen. Just throwing out points willy-nilly. Crush it. You get points. points. You get points. points. Yeah. I get a car. Patrick? Sprinkling points everywhere. I, I learned my lesson because I tried to sprinkle points on the Bears last week, and they were actually playing underwater, so I'm not doing that this Whoops. time. I checked the weather report. Yep. We have a 58% chance of showers, and shout out to every local meteorologist out there. We know, those of us in the know, know that that doesn't mean it's just a 58% chance, just 58% in the area. Uh, so if it falls in that area, local news so man, it Patrick will rain. Claibon yep. back in the day. Watched a lot of, watched a lot of local weather. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just – I still see uh, some points from the Bears' point of view. Darnell Mooney getting involved, a lot more involved than he did in the last game. But uh, it's, it's just not enough points for me. I, I see the Packers uh, eclipsing uh, that, that nine and a half points. Bears fall – what was my score? <laughs> 21 yeah. to 14. We all can't remember. That's the voice in my head, which may or may not be Drew Christensen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as much as I love Darnell Mooney, uh, Tulane, great. Uh, I'm going Packers here, 20 to 10. And it's because of that Packers defense and how they'll match up against guys like Mooney. We've been hearing that this Packers defense is going to be one of the best in the league. Like, let's see it. You should have mismatches at every single position. Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark, it's a mismatch against this Bears uh, offensive line in the secondary where they're really deep. They can put Jair Alexander on Darnell Mooney and the depth 
uh, across the board is not great. And that linebacker crew, I, I liked what I saw out of rookie Quay Walker a week ago. Like, they are much more talented. There's really no excuse for the Packers defense to give up more than 10. So I like a nice low score and a lot of people bored on Sunday night. You know what goes really well with the, with the defense is if you have your running backs and those two running backs, that's a formula for success, right? So Aaron Jones, when I look to see what's going to happen with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, it's really a combination of that one-two factor. Both of them targeted a lot of times in the pass catching game as well, so that should drive some some My son Walker's games. got Dylan on his fantasy team. Shout out to Walker. This is a, a play. What about Ellis? Play. You're just not going to talk about Ellis? I mean, she, he's Ellis. not on the team. He didn't, she didn't draft Dylan. <laughs> uh, okay, people. I have here in my hand the deed to the Chicago Bears in 2022. Mm. Let me see who whose name is on the deed. It's Aaron Rodgers! <laughs> Give me a meme alert. Fun fact, meme our meme alert. alerts went 4-2-1 and one last week. Not too shabby. When we're all on the same page, we do pretty well. Uh, I am going Packers 21-14. to 14. If Christian Watson catches that ball early on in the game, I think we're talking about a totally different situation. I think that that set the tone for the whole game. He said he's going to be patient with his receivers, and then that patience will start to wear thin, but I'm going to give them another week. And take a look at this. Okay, this was in our research packet this week. Fewest points scored by team with reigning MVP. First game of the of the next season of all time, okay? Mm. Look at who holds those top two spots. Just now it happened in 22 uh, with, with seven points. 2021, he did it back then as well, and he's still at an MVP season. Let's not count him out. See, this is, I know he's not I know he's missing Devontae Adam. See, this is where, Rachel, you go like, oh, how was that Y Tittle game, Greg? You're old. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wouldn't have asked for that. The I arm really motion was the oldest thing Yeah, that was – you really sold it there. <laughs> uh, okay, it's time for Drive to Excellence presented by Mercedes-Benz. Okay, he's thrown four touchdowns and three of his last four against Chicago. Does he throw at least three this week, Sam? What do you think? I do have him. It's very rare for my model to project more than two touchdowns. It's just a – it's it's kind of how the math works. But I do have three forecasts wow. for Rodgers in this matchup. Well, let's be let's be honest. There's a little bit of an asterisk there because there, there you go. It's like one of those shovel passes, maybe a smaller yeah, pass to one of the running were, so They were a hot mess a week ago all across the board. And we it, don't know if the offensive line is going to be healthy. And I'm the not, Bears were frisky. I and mean, Alan Lazard may play. That could yeah. be a huge difference maker as well. I don't think Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw for at least three touchdowns. I think mm -hmm. it happens. Oh, okay. You like that reverse? I was like not, not. trying to do like <laughs> word math. You need an algorithm. Word math. It. You need a word uh, Yeah. My fuse was Again, shorting. shorter passes, they still count. Uh, okay, moving on to this next team. Fun game in the early window on Sunday. Tua looking to start the season 2 win. Oh, two, Tua, two, two, whoa. You guys get it. Uh, Lamar suddenly <laughs> loves to throw the ball. Forward 17 now. rushing yards last week against the New York Jets. Patrick, the Ravens, three and a half point favorites here. Do you think the Dolphins cover? I do. I do believe they cover. I think the Ravens, though, win the game. And if, if you're a fan of, of scoring and points, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, that we're going to do it. I see a really grindy, grindy <laughs> agitation <laughs> noise game uh, between the Ravens and the Dolphins. Greg pointed out to Are me you this okay? week. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, that's what, that's what it does to me when the Ravens are in these games. It's like, ah, brain, I'll explode. Uh, but you pointed out that even though Brian Flores is gone, a lot of the defensive staff uh, that blitzed the Ravens into Bolivian, as Mike Tyson would say last year, is still there. Still there. And that plan, I think, is still going to be there. It's still going to cause problems for Greg Roman's offense. But I see Mark Andrews and Lamar, a late drive, a late touchdown to win it at home. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see this playing out. Ravens win it 23-21. Uh, I think the Ravens and Lamar and their coaching staff have learned from that game. I think they'll have answers for the blitz. And I think these two teams are very similar, except for the quarterbacks, where the Ravens have a huge advantage. When I watched that Tua uh, Tagovailoa tape last week, it, it just looked like any Tua game. And, and that's not saying that's not going to be good enough. It, it's fine. But there were a lot of missed throws. Uh, there were chances for turnovers that the Patriots didn't take advantage of. These are two really good defenses, two running games that are struggling right now. And then I think it comes down to quarterbacks. And I just, I don't see the playmaking. I haven't seen a different Tua yet. So I'm going Lamar winning this game 24-17. I don't think it's that close. Okay. Well, you talk about Tua and making plays. It's a lot easier to make plays when a lot of your secondary is not playing. So when I look at the injury report, so there's no Kyle Fuller. Marks Peters is on the injury. Marlon Humphreys on the injury report. Who else am I missing? I think I'm missing. Brandon Stevens looks like he's probably out. 
That seems a little a dicey. So then you go back and you say, okay, what has happened in these situations? So 29 passing touchdowns and 100.9 passer rating to quarterbacks in the tackle box since 2019, bottom five in the NFL, and also the third most passing yards and most touchdowns to slot receivers since 2021. That's dangerous when you have Tua and you have Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, by the way, my score, 23-20. Ravens win, though. Oh, <laughs> but my gut. See, this is where you know I go math over gut because I probably, if it were only just my gut, I probably would have gone Dolphins. Oh, okay. Run that uh, simulation one more time. Five more times. I want to see like a million gut simulations. Uh, okay, I'm going they Ravens don't. as well. Clean sweep across <laughs> the board. Me alert. Me alert. I'm with Greg. I feel like that was a while ago. This the offense will have figured out what the defense has to to show. I know the Dolphins played really well on defense against the Pats last week. But this is we're going to talk coin flip games coming up a little bit later in the show. This may or may not be mine. Not to tease it fully, but I, I've gone back and forth on this game a bunch. Uh, but I'm going to go the home team here. Uh, okay, coming up on the other side of the break. We're talking Brady. We're talking Brady, who's been very bad against the Saints. What is going on there? We will discuss coming up. Does that continue? We don't know. Kryptonite. They bring in the greatest to have ever done it in Tom Brady. And boy, optimism is all over the place. Brady, he goes down, he's sacked, and he's taken down. I know I can be better. Goes over, no, that ball's intercepted. A mastery over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady again ends up on the ground. Boy, Tom Brady's got to feel like this is deja vu. Intercepted, picked off. This is not the way the script was written. Keep my hands from it's picked off again. P.J. Williams picked me off there in the last game. That still kind of pisses me off. There's work ahead at one Buccaneer place. You heard him, Greg. It pisses him off. What is going on here? He's Tom Brady. He has no weaknesses. Does he snap out of it against the Saints this weekend? They are favored by two and a half. I mean, that video was rude. It looked like an in-memoriam. Oh, by the way, he <laughs> beat the Saints white, in the yeah. playoffs on the way to winning That's a Super Bowl. That's the one that Bowl. counts, people. Uh, and they're going to win again this week, too, 26-23. Uh, Tom Brady's going through a lot these days. He's saying he's feeling emotions at a higher level than ever. ever. Like, I I'm with you. I'm in my mid-40s. Did he also do like, ayahuasca? I cry on the plane. It's all happening. <laughs> but you know what I don't do? Throw the ball 57 and a half yards in the air on a dime to Julio Jones last week. I love how quickly Tom Brady gets the ball out of his hands and still gets the ball downfield. It doesn't even make sense to me how quickly it's out of his hand. And then he gets these chunk plays. This is not the same Saints defense uh, as we saw in those clips because – Chauncey Gardner-Johnson making that big play last year. Mm -hmm. He's not there. The run defense, which has been so good, I think it's going to struggle against Leonard Fournette. Marcus Williams not there. I think it's a close game, but I think the Bucks win. So, uh, hold on one sec. You said you're crying on the plane. What are you crying oh, on the plane the about? Oh, all the time. Documentaries, and movies, me? like that. Oh, Basically really anything. Beautiful. I'm glad that you're so in touch with your emotional sides. Oh, <laughs> you need to set up a therapy session with Craig. Oh, yeah, like no problem. I'll get that on the and list. Perfect. I, too, have a close game, 24-22. I don't think Tom Brady, if this is indeed his last year, the poetry of it just has to fall that Tom Brady just slays this dragon. Yeah. But when I look to see why, it's because Todd Bowles is masterful at stopping the run. If you look to see how Alvin Kamara has done over the past two seasons, 2.6 yards per rush. That's his average. The highest he had in the game, 61 rushing yards. Now, is he specifically going to play? I don't know. He's on the injury report. He's dealing with an issue, a, a health issue. So the point is, is stopping the run in general is a Todd Bowles forte. It doesn't matter if it's Kamara or not. But I think that this is one of those things where then you put Jameis Winston in a situation where he has to pass. More passes means more opportunities for mistakes through the air. So for me, 22 or 24, 22. That's one way to look at it. Oh, come I see Jameis throwing the, the ball tree. more. There's more opportunity for points because this Saints offense is not – you you don't have Marquez Calloway as your wide receiver one anymore. Yeah. Uh, Jarvis Landry had an incredible game in week one. Okay. I love the way Michael Thomas bounced back. I do see – points in this game, which is a weird thing to say considering these are two good defenses and teams that know each other very well. It's going to be, as Greg pointed out, Leonard Fournette. Uh, Cynthia said it too. Uh, so much Lenny, uh, especially catching passes out of the backfield because the Saints are going to play man. Yes, Greg, CJGJ is gone. Ooh, the look at, we all have a high number The there. defense is... Yeah. It's, but I, I just... Jameis playing against his old team. Uh, we got Chris Olave now. It's 
points. I like points in this one. Saints win it at home, 27-25. Last second, Will Lutz field goal again. Two there you go. Row. Okay, I am going Bucks, which means this is maybe your first solo pick <gasps> that we're singling out. And what did Woo! we decide to call it today? A stray bond. Oh, <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? It? Yeah. Stray bond. What, what is the emoji? What is, is that it, a dog? guys? Stray bond. Is that a yeah, dog? it's it's a dog. Okay, oh, it's a like dog. I, I've been unleashed. Except like unlike <laughs> Baker, there's oh, good. It's good things. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, I'm going back 24 to 21, mostly because of what Cynthia said. I want the poetry. Brady woke up on Monday and said, "I got I'm bruised. I got cuts. <laughs> like this has got to, you know, I want this to make sense. Why I've come back? Well, make it make sense by balling out and letting us watch a high. Like the one game. thing he hasn't done: beat the Saints this, in exactly. the regular season. There you season. go. Brady in the regular needs a season. Needs ending. Who cares about the playoffs? <laughs> beat him in the regular season. That's what's exciting. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's run back uh, that this guy or that guy thing. Ugh. Brady or Jameis, who is more likely to throw for over 250 Ooh. yards? Can I interest you in both guys? Is that an option? <laughs> I'm going both guys. Oh, I, 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 like, like you, Patrick, I, I think it's going to be more offense than you expect. And some of those throws that Jameis made last week, oh my gosh. I mean, it was bringing me back to Sounds 2014, like to 2015 States. when I really believed. Hold on, are you going to change your mind? I'm not changing my picks, but I think Jameis Winston has never had three receivers this good, and all three of his guys are getting after it. So I think it could be like great great offense, great play by both of them. Okay. Uh, okay, well, here are all the games that we agree on. Uh, we're all taking the Colts across the board, the Rams, the 49ers, the Bengals, big bounce back game there. And let's ride. Watch out for oh the boy. Falcons keeping it close. That make I mean, I think the, the Texans could keep it close okay. as well. And, I agree. And the, uh, the Jags and Colts could be. Yeah, that Jags Colts is always dicey. Uh, Considering well, Frank Reich has literally season. never won in Jacksonville, that feels dicey. Here. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'll uh, say it. Let's talk about a couple of games that we're going solo, mostly solo on. Patrick, the, the first game on Monday night's Titans Bills. Are you out of your mind? I oh. am. They you, you not afraid. What? You should have known this going Trayvon. in. Trayvon! I, I, I really think it's one of those matchup type situations. The Buffalo Bills are a spectacular <laughs> team. Uh, they could beat. Uh, Almost any, they could beat anybody. We've seen it. We saw it in week one, the, the issues that they presented uh, to the Rams. But styles make fights. And we saw Derrick Henry have a slow start last year. 57 yards, came right back, went to Seattle, had 182 on the ground. I just see a King Henry game and a Ryan Tannehill moment. They're doubting Ryan Tannehill. I'm one of those as well. Uh, but they, they get it done. 25, Stray 24 Stray in Buffalo. Where's, where's, the, where's, the, where's the emoji? Where's your emoji? I hope it's really high scoring and close. That would be very fun. This was one of the best games of the year last year in primetime, and no one thought the Titans would win that game either. Ah, all right, uh, Greg, I think that you're going solo dolo on one as well. What do you I think? am. I'm going with the Jets 13 to 12. So, in a game this ugly and this much defense, I really like what I saw out of the Jets defense mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. uh, Sauce Gardner looks like the truth. I like that pickup. <laughs> DJ Reed at cornerback. Jacoby Brissett was struggling. And I know Joe Flacco isn't going to light it up either, but I just don't want to live in a world where this ugly Browns offense is 2-0 in a close, low-scoring game that I think the world is just going to make the Jets 1-1. I don't want to live in that world either. Wait, give the, you Can talked about both corners, right? Both corners. Yeah, DJ okay, yeah. Reed, I I'm think, just is a say, really good player. DJ Reed, that, yeah. that interception was, I mean, my back would hurt for three weeks after that. And when Robert <laughs> Sala was like, you know, we didn't lose the game. They, you know, we didn't, they didn't beat us. We lost. And we, we were getting aggressive. He's talking about his defense. He thinks his defense is awesome. The offense, not so much. A lot of Rex Ryan there. They had really, their corners were great. Both yeah. of them. Um, okay, I was going to be a lone, a lone netta on this, but Patrick just decided that I can't have my own game. <laughs> yeah. Can I? It's all part of my plan. I'm going Giants <laughs> I need over. I need a screenshot on that. <laughs> 24 to 21, and Patrick's got something similar, 21 to 12. Um, I just, I watched the Panthers very closely last week because they were playing uh, the team that I used to love, the Browns. Baker Mayfield had some, he, he had a 75-yard, like, dime. It was amazing, and then he just had a lot of a lot of this oh just they're still figuring it out they're still figuring it out on that side and and then Saquon Barkley on the other side I really want this just to be a great year for that guy and he looked great in week one I think this is the Christian McCaffrey game 
because I, too. I think this is the game where you see Christian McCaffrey just explode for like 180 yards. Well, I have him crazy in fantasy, like so I wouldn't hate that either. Right, if you think about that <laughs> Giants uh, game a week ago, their linebackers were never in the same area code as Dontrell Hilliard, uh, the Titans running back. So now you got to go against McCaffrey. That's trouble. We shall see. All right. Uh, NFL Knockout presented by Caesar Sportsbook is a free-to-play game on NFL.com. Win an exclusive VIP trip to experience the 2023 Pro Bowl, the 2023 NFL Draft, or Super Bowl 57 Weekly. Answer 10 questions about Sunday's <laughs> game. Off the leaderboard to win a bullet. trip of a lifetime. Visit NFL.com slash knockout to sign up, play, and win. All right, coming up on the other side of the break, Patriots Steelers. Oh, we have to show that they one. Keep showing it like that I, is the, yeah, yeah, that's all right. the play he got hurt on. It's we, disrespectful. We know what our, our, our producer's standing on this game. Uh, coming up, who's going to win that one? We will let you know what we think. Want more stats? Just ask Siri, who leads the league in rushing yards? Hmm, are we going to trust Siri or are we going to trust Cynthia Freeland? Cynthia. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to trust Cynthia. We're going to do the math for you. These guys, good at rushing, okay? They lead the league after week one, and here's what you and FanDuel have to say about how they will fare this week. A little higher on Nick Chubb uh, than uh, on FanDuel. You uh, thinking a big game for him? Yeah, so I know that the Jets did an excellent job of containing the Ravens last week, but this is a different type of offense. So the way that they use both of the running backs and those outside rushes, that's an area where they're going to have more success against the Jets. It's not to say that the Jets won't do a good job, but it's it's not going to be something where you're seeing that like limited to, I mean, th- that was the lowest amount of rushing yards that the Ravens had as an offense since Lamar Jackson became the starter. Mm-hmm. They were missing J.K. Dobbins, but when you look to see Nick Chubb, over 70 or 82, I think was the number. I have 88 rushing yards for him oh. at least. So much more important, more volume to their running backs, much more, you know, this is the passing. It's not as good of an option for the Browns. I'm trying to say it nicely. They're better at rushing the football. <laughs> Don't pass the ball. Um, okay, if you like a lot of uh, high scoring points, high scoring games, these are the highest over unders of week two going into week two. All right, we got cards, Raiders. Oh boy. The highest there. What are you oh boy? What do you S- I already I, I, I just know what's coming. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. 48 and a half for Washington Detroit. Oh, we're gonna do some over unders here. Yeah. So 48 and a half for Washington and Detroit. I think that I am going over. I liked what I saw from the line. You guys all called me crazy for taking the Lions last week, and I chose to believe in their heart. Okay, I still have hard knocks brain. Uh, they had a lot of fight. This, well, this is the they weirdest uh, narrative fight. you're peddling here. They were down two scores the whole game, and they lost. You don't get credit they to brag afterwards. They had a fight, Greg. Carson Wentz. Put up four touchdowns as well and two picks. I feel so good about uh, the over here, too. I think this is like the sneaky, fun game of the year. Scott Turner was getting it done last week. Suddenly, the commanders, uh, they may be going to kind of take command. No, Curtis no. Samuel, on, Terry dude. McLaurin, John Dotson, like g- guys who are very versatile. I think Samuel kind of unlocks their offense. I have a close game in this one, 26-25, which adds up to 51 total points, which is more. I felt more, felt better about this earlier in the week when it was, like, way more different. But 51 points mm. is what I have in a close matchup. So I have to be anti-fun here. Yep. I, yeah. have, I have to say it seems yep. like the, it all seems the like green. You like deep. No, I think Good. that's smart. I'm yeah. rooting for grit. Under, uh, I, I'm taking the under because... There's always that question after week one. Was this really good offense or bad defense? I think it was just good offense from the Philadelphia Eagles. That was nice. That's nice of you to say. Yeah, because if, you if Cynthia Lions doesn't fans. believe in the Lions, I will. I believe in the I Lions. I like them to win. I believe I like in the them. Lions. Uh, I love them. Not as much sold on Carson Wentz, though. Uh, so, yeah, I'm wow. taking the under. Uh, okay, up next, Patriots, Steelers, the only game we haven't hit yet today, over under at 40 and a half. Ooh. I am taking the Patriots 21 to 17, which means I am going with the under. I like a boring Ooh. game. Here. Yeah, I like way <laughs> under here. I'm with you. It's so sad. Like, it's sad that this used to be one of the best rivalries in the league, and now they're the last game we even mention. Uh, but both offenses and offenses of lines, I think, are a mess right now. I think it could be in the 20s. I'm going to use Greg's signature line. Hit the over, over your oh with your boy. with your oh arm. Boy. Usually use your arm. Twenty one twenty. We got work on that one. I know it's bad. 21, <laughs> 21 20 is my score. I actually have the upset here. Oh. I have the Steelers winning this game. So oh. it's a close one. Steelers win. Yeah.
own. Yep, I, I've got a Patriots win, but I'm also taking the under uh, six, 16 to 12. You guys hate fun. Is my score 16 12? Hate feels it. like when these offenses were generated. Uh, it's, just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just not a, not a lot of belief in points in this one. Mac is hurt. Uh, Mr. Trubisky, I'm kind of ready to see Kenny Pickett. I think Mike Tomlin might be after this game. Uh, all right, the often overlooked coin toss. Well, unless you're a Bills fan. Every game's got one. We've got coin tosses of our own. That is coming up next. Get your game day started Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern with NFL Game Day Morning. Now all concern in Cowboy Land is that hand of Dax. We're just one week in and there's already big drama in Big D. We'll let you know if Dax's injury will sink the Cowboys' season and Michael Irvin's optimism. Tom Brady is yet to beat the Saints in the regular season in four tries as the Bucks quarterback. Kurt Warner will explain why it may be more of the same on Sunday. Plus, Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett didn't get a week one win, but the QB and coach are just getting started. We've got an inside look at their unique relationship. Basically, I think that he's breakdancing is probably top five in the world. All that and much more Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Breakdancing? I want to hear more about that. Uh, Cynthia, here are your top five win projections wow. for this week. Are you just going to take everyone over the Cowboys moving forward until Dak? <laughs> I, mean, I, I kind of am surprised that all of them are higher in point totals than all within a point of each other. I, that's actually <laughs> over, over, over. No, I, you know, like I, I like the the number, the differences. You, it's rare for me to see a ten point win, let alone that many ten. My model is like very stingy when it comes to double digit wins. So it was. Well, kind if of like Dak Prescott scores three points, then Cooper Rush might score negative three points. I, I think so. How it works. But so. let's let's talk a little bit closer at this uh, this Bengals win, twenty eight to sixteen. Are they they're coming back with a vengeance this week? I think this is the situation where the Bengals defense was great last week. I understand that it didn't look great because you saw a lot of turnovers which gave them really short fields yeah. but their defense actually really like really showed out it was very good to see and I think in this game we don't get those type of turnovers that we saw from Joe Burrow in fact I have him with exactly zero interceptions which is kind of a big difference considering there were four last game and five turnovers Hmm. All right, well, let's. Uh, there's a couple of games that we don't think are going to be this big of wins. There are a couple of coin flips in our eyes, so let's discuss those. We're going to call it in Ugh. the air. Greg, we look at the games every week, some of them no-brainers. Uh, you know, I'm a days-long Chargers fan. I will always <laughs> pick the Chargers, okay, always, except – Last week when I took the Raiders and this week when I took the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, it's like we have to have That's like a, a, game, right? a, a strong take on each one of those games. But but like each week there's some that we – I don't know. You just throw your hands up. Panthers, Giants seems like that to me. Like I want to believe in the Giants, but you look at their secondary. They are so shorthanded there. They're also thin at wide receiver. Wandell Robinson is hurt. Uh, Carolina, on the other hand, like I don't know how to – have faith in in them at all like this this is a game where either way like someone's gonna lose how about it's not Ben McAdoo heading back to New York Ooh, Ben McAdoo revenge game I like it underrated narrative uh Cynthia what are you oh Patrick what's your coin flip (laughs) uh my coin flip is the Geno Smith led let's Mm. the Geno Smith led Seattle Seahawks going down uh to Santa Clara to take on Trey Lance company I just don't know I, I, Come on, I, give I, it to I tried Gino. to break down the game. I'm giving the edge, I give the quarterback edge to Gino and the experience of the opportunity, the growth that we could see from Trey Lance. When are we going to get that, Grant? I, I, I love uh, Trent Williams. I, I love that part of the 49ers offensive line. Everywhere else, it's an adjustment. No Kittle. Uh, they, the, the Seahawks just lost uh, their best defensive player yeah. in, in Jamal Adams. I, I just don't know. So I'm. I, I'm st- I, I would stay away from this. This, this has got to be the most disrespectful line, though, of the week, right? 49ers favored by nine and a half. I get it. They're at home, still still in the rain. I, I think that Jamal Adams' loss is huge here because this is a game where you would have wanted to see that safety, especially where he lines up and the pressure that he brings and all the different versatility. I think this one, they will pay more for not having Jamal Adams in mm. this one. Uh, my coin flip this week, Ravens-Dolphins. I feel mm-hmm. like I've gone back and forth on this game a million times. Fun fact, the the last time that these two teams played in Baltimore, I believe, was in 2017. The Dolphins lost 40 zip. Didn't put a single score on the board. I think it's obviously much closer this time around. I think 
The Ravens, they're going to have a plan. I know that they shut down Lamar Jackson a year ago. I think that they're going to have a plan for that. He didn't really run last week. And we might see some exciting mm. stuff from him this weekend. What do you think, Craig? I, I feel like one more that we, we didn't mention it was Washington-Detroit. Yes. We should give this game, like, it, who knows it's, what it's is going to happen. Flip. These are That's two organizations. Look at that. They've Once the struggles. math is over, I'm going to put on my Lions gear. I look great you in Honolulu Blue do. as every human yep. being on the planet looks great yeah. in Honolulu Blue. And I will be cheering loudly, but the math said Commanders. The like, I think um, <laughs> the Commanders said that Ron Rivera wants to kind of unleash the full Carson Wentz this year. Like, <laughs> oh, like he had a cool run. So. What does that look like? So th- I think the idea Whoa. is like when he was with the Colts, they were just trying to stop him from losing the game, and yet he still did lose the game. Yeah. So let's actually still let him let lose him the lose. game. Because yeah. then maybe sometimes he'll win the game by being aggressive. He did make some nice aggressive plays a week ago and made a couple Carson Wentzian plays. I don't know if you like that or a very safe Jared Goff. It, it's kind of like two sides of the same coin. Brad, I think I, I like that back to the coin thing. Um, I do have a Terry McLaurin touchdown in this one, so that's interesting. But keep an eye with DeAndre Swift not playing. That would shift the math even more if, if he doesn't play because he's been on the injury report. Patrick's been skeptical of this whole Commanders Lions are fun. The game can be fun it's even if the Lions. quarterback is the Lions. I'm skeptical of Carson Wentz. You can't not love the Lions. The Lions are the most lovable team in the NFL. Oh, I agree Here, with you on that. All right, coming up we've got our write this down so get your pen and your paper ready we are going to gift you with what we what we're really excited about this weekend don't go anywhere the great Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs against the Chargers and Justin Herbert Mahomes under the rest. He's going to scramble and now throws it sidearm. It is Mahomes' match. A play that only Patrick makes. Herbert takes the shotgun snap. Throws to the end zone looking for Mike Williams. One handed grab. Right corner. Mike Williams. Furious rush. Mahomes throws it late. He's got Justin Watson. Catch in the end zone. Touchdown. You're not going to see a quarterback play tougher and do more for their team and will their team to give them a chance than him. There's nobody that can do what he can do. Nobody. Chargers right back on it. Right side, try to intercept it. Pick up by Watson. A 100-yard pick six for a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Thursday Night Football. I hope Justin Herbert uh, recovers quickly. I want him back on the field. Yes. He is a G. The fact that he just stayed out there and just kept on Balling. I was just like, just go sit down. Yeah, I want to lose. Out. Just go sit down. I've seen enough. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's time for. Too. Like, please. Yeah, it's time to write it. this down. This is uh, what we're feeling real good about this week. I will go first. I want a big game from Devontae Adams. I have him over 92 and a half yards. I want him and Derek Carr to start cooking. The Chiefs put up 44 on this Cardinals defense. I want them to do the same this week. Let's go Raiders. I got to love that matchup. I mean, they they had to trade for a cornerback, Trayvon Mullen, that they didn't have. They had another cornerback, had a kitchen accident, so they had to make a trade. Like, that's a bad bad sign. Uh, I'm going to go with my write this down. By the way, I'm undefeated and write this down. Okay. I don't know if you guys know, uh, because I went with Geno Smith a week ago, and I'm going with him again. Uh, What did he say? You wrote me off. I ain't right back. Well, I'm writing him down. Nine and a half point under. Uh, Give me a break. Like, did everyone miss this game? He had the highest quarterback rating in the league when under pressure a year ago. Are we sure the 49ers are any good? I'm not sure yet. We don't know. Seahawks keep this game close. Maybe they even win it outright. (laughs) Nine and a half. That's all we need. I love it. Nine and a half. I love this. You have to go all the way if you're. We are pro Geno on this show. Okay, Okay, so write this down. Cordero Patterson. People forget about him. Fantasy. Why is he not drafted top five, six, seven at least for the first few weeks? Score Daryl Patterson. Look at the bar on the bottom. Score Daryl Patterson is going to score again this week against the Rams. You saw him be used in so many multiple ways last game against the Saints. The Saints, they do bring pressure really, really well, but score Daryl Patterson. Thanks for the uh, the score, Daryl, whoever did that. I think it's Drew Christensen, but really, Good really one, well. Good one, Drew. Along with writing down Scordero, which is spectacular, I'm writing down for you uh, that Devontae Smith will get in the end zone. He had four targets, had a drop. People were worried about the, the game against the Lions. Devontae scores on Monday night. Donkey, donkey. How are we doing in the write this down? We need to we need to keep track of these as well. 
You got to be honest with you. I can't remember what I wrote down. Are you just going to go Gino every single week? Just pro Gino, write this down. I mean, until until he lets me down, which hasn't happened in what nine. I think you should switch it to pick the Seahawks outright. Segments after Gino. If you really believed in him, you'd pick him outright. Just. She's not lying. Is it going to change it? Enjoy the football, everybody. We will see you back here on game day. Change it!